So this is Linda Tillman, and we're going to do a, a hive inspection since we can't do it in person because of the coronavirus. And the first thing that we have to do is to light the smoker. So I'm putting fuel in the smoker. I always light the smoker. I don't use the smoker a lot, but I always light it because you never can tell if you're going to open a hive and have it be a hive of angry bees or have something go wrong, drop a frame, do something that means that you need to um, be able to calm, not, you don't calm the bees with the smoker, but you can uh, make the bees aware of your presence with the smoker. And they think that, um, that there's about to be a fire and um, they go store up with honey and get distracted from the fact that you're there. So we're going to inspect this hive today. This is a swarm that I caught in Inman Park um, about two and a half weeks ago. So my smoker is going at a good pace. And what I'm going to do first with it is announce my presence to the bees. First I'm going to put on my jacket. You should always get dressed for an inspection before you go in and whatever form of protection makes you feel good. For me, that's a jacket and my veil. So I'm putting on my jacket and my veil. And I have the camera placed at the back of the hive because when you're working bees, you always work them from the back. I'm standing in the front, which is not going to make them happy because I blocked their flyway and they want to get into their hive and I'm in the way. So this is an invitation to get stung, but I'm staying here so you all can see that I am in fact putting on my gear. Now I'm going to bring the camera around so you can see what I'm going to do. So the first part of an inspection is to watch the front of the hive and see what's going on. So before I put any smoke in there, I'm gonna watch the front. And what I wanna see, there's a bee went in with pollen on her legs. What I wanna see is a bee going in with pollen on her legs. And, what, and there's another one. So what does that tell me? When I see pollen on their legs, what I know is that the queen is in there laying because the bees use pollen as a way to feed the, the larva. There's another one. So I hope you all have seen it. The pollen is packed on the back legs of the bee in a little pollen uh, depression on their back leg called the corbicula. And when they go to a flower, they gather the pollen and it attaches itself to the hairs all over their body. And as they fly, they comb their hairs with the comb that's on their middle leg and pack the pollen into the corbicula on their back leg so that by the time they get back to the hive, the, um, the pollen is nicely packed into their little suitcase on their back legs. Into cells. Now I'm going to knock at the door of the bees. That's what Michael Bush calls it. So I go puff, 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 puff. It says to the bees, something strange is going on. And I'm going to move you all back to the back of the hive to start the hive inspection. Let me make sure you can see where I'm putting this. Let me back up a little bit more. Front leg. Okay, so now we're going to start the hive inspection. I'm going to do the best I can to show you everything that you would see if you were here. So, first thing I'm going to do is take off the telescoping cover on the top. Now, the bees typically have um, held this on with propolis. In this case, they haven't. It's only been a week since I've seen lay the top on the ground so that it is right side up, I mean um, upside down on the ground as a place to put my hive boxes. Okay, so now I look at the top of the hive and you can see that the bees are using this place on the inner cover as an entrance to the hive and they've done it since I put them here so I'm being very careful to preserve that when I put the hive back together making sure the telescope and cover is far enough away from the edge that they can still get in. So the first thing you do is put the 
house covering cover down here on the um, on the tell on the put the inner cover down on top of the tell covering cover. See, I'm nervous doing this. So I'm not doing. I'm not being as articulate. But this is what I call a hive drape, and I put the hive drape over the hive because it keeps the bees calmer. They will think that um, they are not as exposed to the light that would happen if the hive cover were not, if the hive drape were not on it. So I put the hive drape on so the bees will feel a little more safe. And I usually use two hive drapes at once. Now this is a frame rack, and I'm gonna put the frame rack on the side of the hive. So here we go. And the frame rack on the side of the hive so that I'll have a place to hang one frame. I'm gonna put one frame there so that I have room to work in the hive. So now I'm gonna make some space here, open up the cover. And when I open up the cover, what I want to do is just expose a little bit of the hive. Up here in the community garden at Virginia, in Virginia Hogs, it's a, <laughs> the wind is pretty good and it makes it a little harder to hold the hive drape right down. I'm gonna put the hive drape over more than that. The wind is blowing this way, so I'm gonna start, it's blowing this direction, so I'm gonna start over here because the hive drape will stay in better. Now when we looked at this box last week for the first inspection of this box since it was installed, the bees were living only in the top box. Um, I'm not sure why they decided to do that, but they like the top box best over here. So I'm going to put that hive tool down to help weight that and get a different hive tool to use to get into the hive. So always when you are inspecting a beehive, it's better to take the second from the the second frame in as the first frame you pull out. That way you're not rubbing the bees against the hard wooden wall of the hive. And this second frame, immediately I can see has a problem. I don't use foundation in my hives, and the bees are building a comb that cuts across to the next frame, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna teach them a little lesson here. So I'm gonna take this out. See if I can find an egg. I can show it to you. If you'll look in this part of the frame, you'll see little C-shaped larvae. I hope you can see it. I'll see when I get home. And this right here is capped larvae. All right, so I'm going to take this frame and hang it on my frame. We don't usually uh, mess up the housekeeping order of the bees, but because they're trying to draw a comb in a funny way on that frame, I, my plan is to take this frame that's right beside the wooden board of the hive, which is completely empty, and I'm gonna move it into the second position. And when I put that frame back in, I'm gonna put it in the first position so that they will not keep building crooked comb. 
But meanwhile, we're gonna look at the next. Now, in an ordinary hive inspection, I'd quit right now. I've got proof that the queen is laying, but I wanna show you a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more. Let's see what else we see. Okay, this is beautiful. Another absolutely beautiful frame. This is a terrific queen. And I'll show you what I'm seeing. That beige covering right here, this is all worker brood that has been capped. So it's at least five days old. And then this beautiful work that's going on all through here while they're taking care of the young bees. I'll look and see if I can find anything else special to show you. Right here at the very top, right in here, is pollen being stored. I hope you can see that. And over here is some pretty fat larvae. And now I'm going to put this back in the hive before I break the comb off because I use foundationless frames. And when you use foundationless frames, they don't typically support the brood at the bottom. And it means that you have to be very careful when you're um, manipulating the frames not to expose, not to, to lean it at an angle because there's nothing holding it at the angle. There's nothing anchoring it to the bottom of the frame. This is a great queen. She has even more beautiful worker brood. Beautiful worker brood all across there. On this side as well. Beautiful worker brood. She's working hard to build up her population for the nectar flow, which is going to start really, really soon. The only reason I keep looking is I wonder if I'll see any drone brood um, to show you. And then I'm going to close this hive up because it doesn't need to be bothered anymore and the wind is so bad I'm worrying about chilling all this brood that I'm taking out. Now this frame is really heavy because what she's doing on this one is collecting honey, nectar for honey. Look how much bigger those cells are. When you let your bees draw their own foundation, their own honeycomb, they build it whatever size they need. And these great big cells are what they build when they're putting up honey. And that's what they're doing in that frame. is all brood. Lots and lots of brood. And Billy Davis calls this color brood light biscuit. Next week it'll be a little darker. The cappings will just because the bees will have walked over it more. And then it's medium biscuit. And by the time it's ready to hatch out, this is actually more medium biscuit. By the time it's ready to hatch out, it's dark biscuit. And so you can know how close you are to having the new brood come out. Okay, so I'm now putting this hive back together. And I'll pull this last frame all the way in in a minute. And I'll take it out right now so that I don't roll these bees against the wood because remember I said not to put a frame right up against the wood but we're going to put this frame right up against the wood so that they'll quit doing that wonky comb and we're going to put this empty frame in here in the second position. Hopefully they'll do a better job of not making cross comb because we did that. 
Okay, so I'm gonna leave the cover on this. Number three, so you need several worth of beans. I'm gonna lift up this box and very gently move it. Oh, it's heavy already to the bottom, to the center top of the inner cover. I'm gonna cover these girls up with a, a hob drape. Now you notice I hadn't used my smoker because the hob drapes keep you from needing to. Now, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take out the second frame. They haven't done much in this box, but there are a lot of bees in this box. See, this frame has nothing going on. another hive, an already drawn comb. But you can see in looking at it that the bees, when they're building this great big comb with these big cells, I'm sorry my hands are shaking, when they build combs with these big cells, they're doing it for honey, so they attach it at the bottom, where they don't attach the brood comb at the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna put this back in and we're gonna close this hive up. You notice you try to move pretty slowly when you're dealing with the bees because we don't want to move so fast that we upset them. And this is called the bulldozer method. Instead of just setting your hive box down, you slide it toward the front so that bees can get out of the way as you move it. And put it back on and pick up the telescoping cover and put it back on. Now because these bees are using this as a back entrance, I'm going to go up to the front and push forward so that I've given it as much space as it can have back here and they can keep using it as an entrance. So they go in both the front door and the back door. Okay, so that's the end of the hive inspection on hive number one. Okay, so now we're going to try, I think that one turned out good enough that I'm willing to do another hive inspection up here. So we're going to start with the, the hive we installed last week on Saturday. And this hive is, um, this hive, it was a nuke that we're installing. So I'm taking my smoker. Again, I'm going to go, I'm going to come look at the front door again. Um, I'm not going to make you all do that because you know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for bees coming in with pollen on their legs. I'm going to go puff puff at the front door to let them know I'm here. Puff puff. I'm here. Knock knock. And I'm looking. And, um, and they've been flying in and out pretty well. So we're going to see what they look like when I open them up. Okay, so I'm going to take the top off. I need a hive tool. I think the only thing I don't like about this is that I keep having to walk past you all with my bottom showing. <laughs> I'd rather face you, but oh well. Okay, so we're going to take off the top here and see how things are going. So let me see how it looks to you. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so I'm going to take off the inner cover again. Now this hive is not using the inner cover as a back door, so don't have to worry about them so much. And this hive, because it is a nuke, came is in a deep box and a medium box. The deep box is what it came in. So these bees are not in this top box, they're in the bottom box. I'm gonna put 
a hive drape over here nonetheless and move it down to sit on top of the inner cover while I inspect the activity of the nuke that we installed. Now it's going to be further along than the little swarm hive we looked at in the previous video because this hive was a nuke. When you get a nuke, it's an already started beehive. So I'm going to lift this up. Oh my goodness, they built comb attaching to the bottom of the frame, which is what that noise was about, and I need to figure that part out today. So we're going to let them calm down for just a minute. Now this is a day when I probably do want to use my uh, smoke because they're not happy that I just did that. They weren't happy that I did that action that pulled their, um, pulled their comb off and and was rather violent so I don't like it either so I'm gonna do what you don't have to ever hurry with the hive inspection so we're gonna give them a few minutes to get used to the idea that I'm here meanwhile I'm gonna put the frame rack on the side of the hive so that we can do our inspection in just a minute I don't know if any of you are using eight frame boxes but all my boxes are eight frame and eight frame boxes tend to have a little more room in them than 10 frame boxes do so there's a little more wiggle room for your frames it's got good and bad parts i don't understand why those bees were building comb up bees do like to have a, a ladder to get from one half box to the next but they don't typically do what we just saw and it makes me wonder why i wonder if i don't have um a, a filled out frame in this top box i thought i did but i'm gonna look and see if this top box is without any drawn comb, that may be why they're doing that. And actually, it looks like it is without any drawn comb, and bees do not like that situation. I don't know how I did that. So I'm gonna make a note to myself that I need to come back up here later on this afternoon and add a frame of drawn comb, because when you're working with foundationless frames, which is what I do, the bees can't um, be, can't get easily to the next box. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna stop the video and go down to my car. I've got a frame in the car with drawn comb in it and bring it up here. So in my car, I had these two frames, this one and this one. And these should give the bees a bridge. You know, you always do an inspection to see what problems do we have in this hive? And we discovered one that's really important, which is even though those bees were pretty crowded in the old box, they are uh, unable to get comfortably to the upper box. So I'm gonna take this upper box and I'm going to take off of it two frames kind of in the middle I'm going to take this and put this up at the front so these bees will go back into the hive. Just put them by the front door. This one as well. I knocked most of those off. but um, And then I'm going to replace those two frames with this one. Now I'm going to look at the frame. There's something called housel positioning. If you look inside the cell, you can see a T shape or a Y shape. Um, and if it's upside down, that goes toward the center of the hive. And so this one is upside down. On this side, if you look at the house of positioning, the Y goes up. I don't know if you can see it, and I'll have to show you in person sometime. But this one, this side goes toward the outside of the hive, so I'm putting it here. I'm gonna put an empty frame beside it, and then I'm going to take this one and look at it for housel positioning also. It's not that important, but there's some thought that housel positioning helps the bees fill up the comb better. So I'm putting it in in its housel positioning also with the Y. So these four all should have comb that grows th has the Y this way, and these four have the comb with the Y that goes that way. Now I'm going to put this back down here. Oh, great. <laughs> Hive drape came too. So that... I can work on this box that's the original nuke and we can see what's going on with it. 
I have to tell y'all, I have no idea whether I can put all this into a movie together, the three videos, when I get home, but I'm going to do my best so that we can have our virtual hive inspection. Okay, so now I'm going to open this up. The bees are calmer because I didn't just drop something, which is how they experienced what happened before. Now, these two frames on the outside are frames that I put in when I was here installing the hive. So I'm going to pull up the second one, just like I always do in a hive inspection. It's probably not had much happen to it, but they may have built some wax on it, so we're going to see. Look at there. Just in a week, this is what they've done. Look at that beautiful, beautiful wax. It's white and gorgeous. Big cells because it's toward the outside of the box. So what they're going to use it for is storing honey. They won't be raising brood in this. And they are doing a great job of wax building. Isn't that pretty? Wow. I love seeing new white wax. So special. Okay, so we're going to hang this frame on the frame rack on the side. And you'll notice these bees, the bees that you can see in here, I hope you can see them right here. That's called festooning. I'm sorry, my handshake. That's called festooning, and they're hanging from each other and building wax. All right, I hope you were able to see it. Okay, I'm going to put this on the side of the box and let it hang here while I'm looking at the rest of the half. But that is a glorious thing to see that they have already started building wax. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull out this outside frame too because they are also building wax on it, but they've just barely started. Can you see those little tiny bits of wax that they're building? And these over here on this corner are, are also festooning from each other as they pass the wax. The wax comes out of their abdominal plates and they pass it up the chain like a bucket brigade. Okay, we still have the wind as an issue like we did in the first video. And we're going to just look at this a little bit because there's not urgency. There's no major problem. We fixed the major problem already, which was they didn't have a clear pathway to the top box. I'm going to take my hive tool and scrape this wax off that they've been using for a ladder because it's going to be a continual inspection problem if I don't. Now, I didn't just throw it on the ground. I threw it in my toolbox. Okay, so these are plastic frames, which you've noticed I don't use. I use wood like in a tree. Now, this is a very heavy frame. Let's see what they're doing with it. They have lots of nectar in it. Looks like it's all nectar. That's why it's so heavy. This is full of honey. Honey for the baby bees. Now they may be going to build brood. I, I have to turn this one over to see this side. Yeah, they have brood all in here. And on black plastic, you should probably be able to see it. So there's brood in all of those cells. I'm going to stand still for just a minute so the camera can focus and maybe you can see inside the cells but they are building brood and look what a nice big football shaped pattern this is of brood that they're building in here and the queen is obviously going to town laying because almost every one of those cells is filled with larvae so that is a really good sign we got this nuke from brandon ty and he gave us what i would call a very generous nuke it's filled to the brim with bees and good stuff Again, I'm going to clean out the top of this wax. I don't want to hurt that little girl. But I want to get this off the top because I want them to come up into the second box because of the ladder I'm now providing them and not making this gunky wax to make a problem between my boxes. But we can tell that this is a happy queen and she's doing great. And oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Okay, look at this beautiful capped brood. Billy Davis would call this light biscuit. He said you can tell from the color of the capping of the brood how old the brood is under it. So brood is capped at about four days at the end of four days. I mean at the end of seven days. They Four days an egg, three to four days an egg, and then they're larva. But when they're capped, they put on a light cap at first, and the caps wouldn't stay light except bees have dirty feet. So they keep walking on the capping, and it gets darker and darker. Now look down at the bottom of this frame. I hope you can see the bottom. At the bottom of the frame are a lot of drone cells. They look like bullets. And that's where they're building drone brood. That's exciting. Also. Okay, so I'm going to put this
this one back in the hive. Now I've seen all I need to see on this hive as well. We've even seen drone cells. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna clean off the wax on the top of the rest of these frames. And then we're gonna close this hive up and call it a day. And we, if we're getting to watch this movie together, I'll answer, oh, just got a little sting on my finger. I'll answer any questions y'all have. Now that wasn't the bee's fault. I stuck my hand right into her stinger and invited that. Now, if you get stung and you're not wearing gloves, a good idea is to blow the smoker on it because the smoke takes away the smell of the pheromone, the danger pheromone that's admitted with the sting that says, we're in trouble here. There's somebody in our house. Here again, beautiful brood, fully in the frame on both sides. And again, they're building drone cells at the bottom. Now this is because this is, um, these frames came in foundation. And if the bees have the luxury of building their own wax, like I do in my hives, um, they build drone cells wherever they want it. But in foundation frames, the foundation is sized to fit the worker bee. And so they typically build the drone cells down at the bottom where they have more room to um, build a bigger cell, which they don't have in the middle of plastic worker brood, um, you know, demand, which is what the foundation is. Now I'm going to shake these bees that are on the drape back into the hive, lay that on the ground, and get this last frame that we hung on the rack and put it back into the hive in its position, in the second position. And we are done with our inspection. It's important to remember to remove your frame rack. I often forget <laughs> and I'll put the whole thing back together and go, oh shoot, I gotta go back and fix the frame rack. Now we got some bees here that are hanging on the side and that's fine. If they want to, they can do that. But I'm gonna take my brush and just encourage them to come back up into the hive girls because I'm about to put the top on this and close it up. Not a necessary thing to do at all, but I just didn't want to in front of you kill bees. Now, before we close this up completely, I'm gonna cover this up on this side and get rid of that burr comb to discourage this thing that's been happening. I'll go all along this. The girls are all in here working. Sometimes they build drone cells in this area, in, in the drone comb, because they don't have room on foundation-based frames. more and then we're calling it a day. I hate it that y'all aren't here. I love the questions that get asked while you're doing an inspection and I'm not getting to talk to you which I'm sad about but maybe we'll get to talk together when we look at this video. Okay so now I'm gonna take the, the hive drape off. I'm coming back over here to the box that we fixed and hope that that does the trick for them. By the way lots of the building in this hive is on this side and so I put the two frames that need to be as ladders here and here, which are uh, closest to those gunkiest frames. So now we put the inner cover back on very gently so that they have room to get out of the way. I don't want to kill any bees if I can help it. And then we're going to put the top cover back on and make sure it's seated well and we're done and then of course you want to give up gather up all your stuff and go home so thank you for watching and i'll answer your questions now